Just imagine having to memorize and flawlessly recite passages of the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, written in 1599. This is a long-standing tradition for the people of Kariku, who celebrate the cultural art form called Shakespeare Mass. This tradition is executed on Carnival Tuesday in February and is among the most looked forward to traditional art form around the festive season, drawing vast crowds of spectators. Around 7 a.m., one by one, masqueraders dress each other in preparation, and as customary, they adorn themselves with elaborately brightly colored costumes, predominantly red, green, yellow, blue, and black, which were handmade. The costumes include a long sleeve overall with a black heart in the center called a demacou, with swan on triangular shaped strips of fabric in an overlapping style, covered with bells and a shining glass mirror around the chest area, and a white petticoat underneath with other accessories. Participants will also wear a headpiece made of cement bags and a mask to protect their identity and themselves from what is expected to be a heated battle of wits where those who fail to recite correctly passages of Julius Caesar will be whipped with a wire wrapped in plastic. The colors of red, green, yellow, and black that adorn the masqueraders also denotes spiritual significance within the West African culture and can be found in the worship of Yoruba Orishas, which are deities like Ishu, Ogun, Oshun, and Shango. The mirrors used on the costume also have a deep meaning as it is said to be worn to represent the realm where their deceased ancestors dwell and have been known to decorate the early 20th century graves in the African Congo. However, remnants of the history are still fresh in the minds of retired mass players as they recall reciting school excerpts, selections from Julius Caesar, originally pulled from the royal reader literature used in schools during the colonial era from the 1800s to the 1950s, but of recent, masqueraders are opting more to recite passages of the Friends, Romans, Countrymen from Julius Caesar. Now, Julius Caesar is what most Caracuans play as the Shakespeare Mass. And we started teaching the children from the Julius Caesar and hoping that they would keep the tradition going. The Shakespeare Mass is reminiscent of a medieval European individual known as a court jester, similar to a modern-day clown, who is said to be a non-conformist European entertainer with exceptional verbal or physical skills. Although these court jesters were focused on entertaining the noblemen and members of the royal family, they also convey a deeper political undertone, subliminally transmitting stories disguised as entertainment, a portrayal that is also reflected in the Shakespeare mass performance disguised to mock colonial dictators, while also secretly revealing the disciplinarian tactics used on enslaved Africans. The movement of mass players resembles that of stick fighting popularized in several Caribbean countries including Trinidad and Tobago, and the whips signify the abusive weapons used by hostile Europeans to maintain control during slavery. This aspect recalling the torturous days of slavery can be seen with the occasional striking of one another on the crown headpiece whenever a masquerader makes a mistake. The anticipation also drew long-standing retired masqueraders to the Top Hill area of Mount Royal, where masqueraders gather to get ready, to wish participants good luck, and as part of the morning ritual, they also join in to have a ceremonial sip of rum before the best masquerader ventures out one by one down towards the village crossroad where the showdown begins. Traditionally, only men will play the Shakespeare Mass, but of recent, girls are also getting more involved at the crossroad near the Mount Royal La Resource Community Center, masqueraders converge to recite meticulously learnt verses from Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar, as spectators gather around in a circle referred to as a cipher to cheer on. Mass players can be heard orating their verses with the other players shouting brave, which seem to signal to the other player to continue. This call and response is mostly unique to African culture, as one group calls upon or asks questions of the other through performance, and the other answers or responds through performance. <laughs> The experience this morning was great, you know. 
I mean, it started kind of late, but after he picked up a momentum, eh? it wasn't that easy to go out there and do it. But as I love it, I'm most of a famous mass man. I put my strength into it, effort into it, and I done it this morning again. There is someone that brought me into it, and they gave me the book to learn the speech because you have a Julia Caesar book. I used the book a couple of days, and from using the book about a week, everything just registered in my head. Don't know what happened, but I never go through the book again. And like the book might just automatically gone into my head. And from that, right time I say one word, a whole book just come into my head. Even the retired masqueraders face off with the younger ones in friendly rivalry. But despite the buzz created around the carnival season, the Shakespeare mask has been overshadowed by other recently spawned entertainment in recent years, and it continues to see dwindling numbers of people interested in partaking in this cultural event. Some of the older retired masqueraders reflect on their experience partaking in the cultural tradition called Kambule. Kambule, the, well, we have it a lot this year. Beat the drum, the tax speech, and they are kind of replaying stick. What for the word, what for the thing. Men used to get caught and go in hospital. But me and my mate, you know what I used to do? We used to make sign. If I go on this side, I team up. I team up on that side. We, way, they never know we're making sign. So we can't get with head boss, we can't get with head break. You have one here in the there. about five of them are up in the hospital by place to get teeth break. So you go to, but we the old men and them, especially in Montreal, they say the old men and them, but we go in, who die, die, who of ages, they can't even begin. What are holding on? So it's nice to see that the, the uh, mass is, is uh, revived to this point that it is now. Today was good, and it's nice to see that the young children are involved. So, you know, to carry on the tradition. After the showdown at Mount Royal, the Shakespeare mass players, including the younger ones, relocate to the city to stage the ultimate showdown in Hillsborough, where their rivals from Six Roads signaled their presence while marching up by chanting, tell them we coming down, who in the way cleared away. <laughs> Both combatants would clash, and in some instances, masqueraders had to be separated when they become entangled in a heated brawl. Upon completion of the mass, people retreat to the market square to feast on some delicious foods. Well, we usually cook the, like a saraka food, we cook the, the rice and peas. We have the meat, you know, provision, you know, for the masqueraders, whenever you go to town. Okay. Everybody come and get their food by the market square. Which is a usual thing, you know, we keep it like a historical thing, you know. Mm -hmm. This is about Montreal, you know, and they keep the whole vibe nice, you know. Keep the community nice, everybody just keep nice together, you know. At the end of the day, despite facing an aging population and declining interest of the younger generation, Shakespeare Mass continues to live on. And the point is said to hear your voice, pause young from a reply.